Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at the Mustachio Lab by TryHackMe. This is a really cool lab that features things such as downloading an SQLI backup database, we are going to be performing an XML external entities attack, we are going to be cracking a hash, we're gonna do a privilege escalation using an SUID binary, so lots to learn here and yeah, let's just get into it. Enumerating the target. So on the Try Hack Me page, we can see that we get given a IP address. And this is obviously the box that we want to break into. So let's head over to Kali and let's start enumerating. The first thing that we want to know is what kind of services this IP address, this server is hosting. And for that, what we're going to do is we're going to do an nmap scan and that is going to do some port knocking. It's going to try out every single port and it's going to give us which ones replied with something. And that way we can figure out which services are running here. So I'm going to start my scan. I'm going to run sudo nmap. Note that the sudo is important here for nmap to properly work. We're then going to set the option dash p to dash. What does that mean? That means it's going to scan all 65,000 ports that there are, so it's going to scan all of them. Then with dash capital T4, we're going to set uh, it to run quite speedy, which might, might be less reliable, but in this case, that's all right. With dash capital A, we're going to make sure that all kinds of scans are being done on the services. We're going to do OS detection. We're going to do a trace route, all of that. And then dash V in the end here uh, is so that we get some verbose output whilst it's running. And then we supply the IP address. Now it's going to start scanning and this might take a while. We immediately see that a port uh, 22 was found. We see that port 80 was found. And after a while, so I'll forward to this so it goes quicker. And then after a while, we get the result and that says, okay, port 22 SSH was open, port 80 HTTP was open. But then there's also port 8765 open. Now it's also HTTP running Nginx. So yeah, let's try to connect to these and let's see what these websites look like. So in my browser, I am currently on the main page. And this is the Mustachio page. You can see a couple of things here and that's all interesting. Um, so okay, that's a website. What about that other port? Well, I have it here. This seems to be hosting an admin panel with a user and password. Okay, so we see that we have these and we want to check them out, obviously. But before we go and check them out, let's start a scan in the background so that we have something that is scanning uh, meanwhile, meanwhile we're working. What do we want to scan? Well, we want to do some content discovery. We want to find out what these endpoints are hosting. And for that, I'm going to use FFUF. Now, FFUF uh, can do content discovery. So let's start a scan here. We're going to say ff dash u and then supply the URL, which is going to be HTTP slash slash and then the IP address and then slash first. Now this first keyword is very important because that's where it's going to perform the scan. That's where it's going to put the words from our word list. And talking about word lists, we obviously also need to supply a word list here. That's done with the dash w option and then we can um, link to a word list and I like to use the default one in Kelly that's there under user share derp so derbuster slash word lists and then slash big.txt and while that's that's running I'm also gonna open another tab here and I'm gonna run that exact same scan but then for the port 8765 again I'm gonna forward this and after forwarding we can see that yes these have uh, resulted in some results. So for our main page, we have custom, which is an interesting one. We have a robots.txt file, which is returning something. And then for the other one, we have an assets folder and an auth directory. Okay, um, time to check these out. And let's start off with the first one here, the custom one. So on my homepage, I'm gonna go to slash custom and then we see that we get the index of slash custom and we see that there's a CSS and a G JavaScript directory here. Now in the CSS directory, if we go into that, we see that that just contains two CSS files. So that's not that interesting. Uh, and the JavaScript directory that contains a mobile.js file, 
but also a users.bac file. A BAK file, what's that? Well, that's often used to refer to a backup. So this is definitely an interesting file that we want to check out. So let's just download this, save that file, and now let's check it out. Back in the terminal, I have my file here present in the directory. Now, what kind of file is this? Well, there's a Linux command that can help us with that, and that is the file command. So running file on users.bak tells us that this is an SQLite database. Okay, well, it's an SQLite database. Can we open it? Let's try to open it with SQLite 3, users.back. Okay, that seems to work. Well, what can we do? Uh, you could type dot help to get a list of everything that we want to do. And here it says, uh, the thing that I want to do here is dot tables to list the names of tables. So uh, let's just do that, dot tables. And that shows that there is one table in this database, and that is the users table. Now, I want all of the data out of that users table. I want to read it. So let's do a select star, so everything from users, semicolon. And okay, there seems to be one user. Uh, I guess their username is admin, and this is then a hash. That is their password. Could that be the case? Well, let's see if we can crack this hash. So I'm gonna do dot quit to exit SQLite here. And then we're gonna try to crack this hash using John. Now John is a great utility for it and you can run it with John and then dash, uh, I think it's dash dash word list equals. And now we need to supply a word list for it to crack. So what it's gonna do, it's going to try a long list of passwords and it's gonna try to hash them and then it sees if the two hashes match up. And on Kali in user share word lists slash rockyou.txt, that's the default directory where this rockyou.txt file is stored, so uh, very nice. And then we just say, okay, try to use that on this hash. Now, I don't have a file hash yet because I haven't created it, so we need to put the hash into a file. And now, if I run that same John command, it will run, you can see it has some warnings where it's trying to de detect which type of hash this is. But in the end it says uh, no password hashes left to crack and that is because I've already cracked this in this session um, so it's not going to try it again. But it remembered that and we can actually pull the end, the result up with that John dash dash show and then for our hash. And that will show that the password or this hash um, cracked is Bulldog19. So that seems to be the secure password of this admin. So let's see what we can do with that password. Because do you remember a little while back where we had that page where you could log in? Well, maybe this is the admin password there. So let's try that out. So on the admin panel, I am going to enter admin and then as password bulldog19. We're going to submit that and we are inside. We are inside of the admin panel and now from here we can obviously try to move on and go forth. Checking out the admin panel. We've just entered as this admin user on this admin panel and all we really see is this main thing where we can add a comment on the website. What is that? What if I enter hello here? What will happen? We get this comment preview, name, author, comment, but no data is displayed there. That's very odd. Let's try to look into the sources of this website, into an inspector element, and let's see what is going on here. So I'm gonna open that up, and now we can see this comment here, Barry, you can now SSH in using your key. Okay, no idea what that means. It might mean that there's a user Barry, but okay. Um, do we have any scripts here? So we have this script, which is just, which is just bootstrap. And here we have another script. And this one starts with a comment saying document.cookie equals example equals slash auth slash don't forget dot bak. Okay, slash auth slash don't forget dot bak. Is, is that a page or what should I make out from that? Let's, let's see. So slash auth slash don't forget dot bak. Okay, that seems to be a file that we can save. So I'll save that file and let's see what it is. So I have the file here, the don't forget.bak. Uh, 
What kind of file are you? This is an XML document. Okay. Can I cat that file? And yes, I can. It, it contains XML. And we see here that there's a name, an author, and a com comment. So maybe this is what you need to enter to make a comment on that admin panel. So I'm just going to copy all of that into the admin panel here. All right. I'm going to remove this long comment here because I do not really want it. I'll just try to test there. But let's uh, submit this. And okay, we see that below here we have the name, the author, and then a comment. Uh, that's, that's cool. We know now how this works. But what can we do with it? Is there a, a way that we could exploit this? And this is where XML external entities can come into play. Because XML is a very, um, is a language that can do a lot of things. And often developers forget that XML can do these things and that you should never trust user data into your XML. And I'm going to show you how that works. And for that, we're going to go to some payloads. We're going to look at some payloads. And I like to use payloads all the things for this. And payload all the things is a repository by Swisky Repo. And it's a really great one. This contains cheat sheets and explanations for a ton of different uh, vulnerabilities as well as for XXE injection, as we can see here. So I'm going to click on that and you can read more about this, but I'm interested in just the basic version here to detect the vulnerability. And here we see uh, some XML as normal. However, we see a line here that says, okay, doc type. Then we have this keyword here and then we have an entity example doe. And then in our XML, we see that we use that entity and what we want as a result from this, if we did detect XXE is that this gets replaced by Doe. So, okay, let's try that out. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna copy the doc type line here and we're gonna enter that in there. Now this keyword, we can change to uh, inti. This one, we can change to um, pink draconium. And this one we can change to, for example, integrity. So these values don't matter here. However, now we need to use this ping draconian entity that I created in, uh, in the XML. So we can use it with an ampersand, then pink draconian, and then a semicolon. I'm going to copy that for um, if it goes wrong, but we're going to execute that. And now integrity is in the name field down below here. So we can see that this entity was replaced by integrity by the string integrity, so an XXE is possible here. Obviously, there is no security impact from this. We want to be able to read files from the backend, potentially get an RCE. So let's continue in our payloads other things um, repository and let's see what else we can do. And here it talks about exploiting XXE to retrieve files. And here we see an example doc type of it. So in this case, we have a doc type with an entity and then we do a system and then a file. Okay, that seems easy enough to try. So let's try that. So all we have to replace here is system. And then here we can select the file. So let's select Etsy passwd and copy and paste. And whoa, that is our Etsy passwd file. We have successfully found an local file inclusion. So from XXE, we can read files from the file system. That's crazy. We can also see that there's a user Joe here and a user Barry. But okay, that's really cool. Now that we have that information, what can we do with it? What, can, what other files would we be able to read? Well, let's take a look back at what we found earlier. In the HTML, we found a comment that said, Barry, you can now log in using SSH. Okay, so that means that Barry has SSH set up and it also talked about his key, so he has an SSH key. Maybe we can extract that one from the server. So instead of getting Etsy passwd, I'm gonna see if in home slash Barry slash dot SSH, because that, that is where these SSH keys are found. And then we need to get the key. We don't know the name of the key. However, by default, the, the private keys in RSA are named ID underscore RSA uh, in this SSH folder. So that would be obviously a good first guess. 
I'm going to submit that. And now we see that, yes, we do get the key. We get the begin RSA private key, which is really amazing. So that's super cool. From here, we can obviously try to get RCE or connect with SSH as the Barry user. Um, so let's try that out. First of all, this key here is in a terrible format, which I don't really don't like. So I'm just going to view the page source here. And that way we can see right here that that displays our uh, data in a nicer way, which will be needed because else uh, SSH will complain about that. So let's copy that. Copy and go to my terminal in here. I'm going to echo that into into um, ID RSA. OK, that's fine. So now I have that ID RSA file. Um, and now we want to try to log in using this file. So let's do ssh-i id rsa for Barry at and then our IP address. And let's see what that does. Oh, well, it says the permissions 0644 for id rsa are too open. We need the correct permissions. And well, what are the correct permissions? Well, the correct permissions are 600. So let's set those up. So uh, chmod 6004 id underscore rsa and now if we try this ssh we will see that we don't get the error however it asks for a passphrase and if i enter something wrong it says permission denied so okay no we, we still need a password we could try the password from earlier uh, but that won't work either however in this case uh, we know that we have the private key so can't we just try to crack the private key and uh You'll get the password from there because I mean it has to be contained in there somewhere. The server has the public key and we have the private key, so we have all the value. And yes, you can actually crack these private uh, SSH keys, um, but for that we first need to turn it into a hash. Now, luckily, we don't need to go through that process ourselves because there is this tool uh, SSH to John, which will take in a private SSH key and convert it into um, into a hash that John can work with and crack. So let's locate ssh2john.py, which is in this directory. So I can run that on my ID underscore RSA and that will output the hash that we can use. So let's put that in hash underscore Barry. All right, we have that now. So now we can go back to my, uh, we can run the John command. So that's dash dash word list equals uh, user share word lists and then rockyou.txt. And then we can do hash underscore Barry because that's the hash that we want to crack. And if I run that, you will see that it says no password hashes left to crack because it has already cracked them. And now we can use John dash dash show with our hash for Barry. And that will show that the password is Uriel James. Okay, strange password, but well, let's try to use it. Uh, Uriel James. So that's SSH in again, uh, ID underscore RSA, Barry at 10.10.50.10. And let's type Uriel James. And would you look at that? We are currently in as Barry. So that's how we went from this XXE to a file read. And then we try to escalate a local file inclusion into an RCE in this case, uh, where we got SSH uh, access. And that's really, really cool. Um, and that's the first part of this box. However, we are not done yet because I want to become root on this system. So let's do that right now. Linux privilege escalation. We just got access as Barry and now we want to escalate the privileges to become root. Um, and for this, we need to start over all over again. We need to start with enumeration. We need to know what is happening on this, on this system, what is going on, where could we find an issue that would allow us to gain more access. And we're going to start off by looking at the current files. Let's look at the files that Barry has. Barry doesn't have a lot of files. So let's take a look at the files in our home directory um, to see if there's any other user that we can look at. And there is the user Joe. So we can go to Joe's directory and look at Joe's files here. Well, Joe has this live log file, which is quite interesting. And I want to learn more about that. So I'm going to run the file command on live log. 
This is going to show what this file is all about. And we can see that it's an ELF 64-bit executable. Now, it's an executable, but one thing to note here as well is that um, before that it says set UID. And in the LS listing, you can also see this S bit set. What does that mean? Well, that means that uh, this file will run as a different user when we execute it. So usually when you execute a file, you execute it as your own user. However, in this case, that's not happening. In this case, we are executing this as the owner of the file. That's what that as means. So in this case, the file is owned by root. So when we execute LiveLog, it will be executed as root. And that's very interesting, obviously, because we are trying to become, well, we're trying to become root. We already have a file that's being executed as root, and that might obviously be a path to the end goal. But we need to do some reversing here. Um, but first of all, let's run this file. And if we run that file, we can see that we see some output of a command of this looks to me like nginx, an nginx access log. That's what this looks like. Um, so okay, this might just show the nginx logs. And now we need to get into reversing this file to know what is going on. And my first step in reversing, I always like to, um, to start off with a strings command and the strings command is going to show all the bytes in this binary that, um, that that form a string together. So let's run that command and we're going to scroll uh, all the way up here and we're going to see that it starts off with a libc, set uid, printf, system and all, and all that stuff um, and scrolling down we also find this life nginx log reader. What does that mean? But below that we see tail dash f slash var slash log slash nginx slash access log and this is exactly the commands that we assumed uh, this binary is running when we executed it so that's very very interesting um however what's the issue with that i mean it's just running tail as root there's no there's no big deal here however um we notice that this binary is running this system command as root how does Linux know where this tail command exists? What is tail? How, how Tail is also obviously a binary that we're executing as root, but where does your system find tail? And that's what we have to look into because usually to do this security, you would have to say, well, slash, u slash user slash bin slash tail. And then you supply the path of where tail is. However, we don't know that. So we need to find out where tail is and we can do that with where is tail. And if we run where is tail, we can see that that exists in slash user slash bin slash tail. So if we run the tail command uh, on etc passwd, for example, we see etc passwd because the system executes slash user slash bin slash tail. Now, um, I can obviously also create my own file called tail. So let's do that. So let's echo bash into um, tail which we can do here, we have to do in my own home folder because that's where I have execution rights. And when I do that and I execute tail at cpazubd, we see that we still are just executing tail. Um, okay, that might be because we don't have execute permissions on my tail um, file that I just created. So let's add those. And now let's just run my tail. Uh, okay, that works. That gives us a bash shell that we can exit out of. Um, but if I run tail slash etsy pezzobd, it still just runs tail. Now, here's where we should look at something called the path. And the path is what your system uses to find these binaries when you don't give more information, when you don't give an exact location. And the path consists out of these series of directories where your system is going to look. So if I execute tail, it's going to look first of all in slash user slash local slash sbin. If it doesn't find the file there, it's going to continue to slash user slash local slash bin. If it doesn't find the file there, it's going to continue to slash user slash as bin. And then finally in slash user slash bin, that is where it's going to find the tail command. And that is how it knows which tail to execute. However, this path is just a variable. We can create a new one. So we can write export and we can export a new path. In this case, I want to set the path to my, my home directory because that's where I have my own little written tail that I want to execute. 
So we can set the path to home slash Barry. However, put a colon there and then put the old path behind it because else none of your commands will work anymore. So that is very, very important. And with that set, let's try to echo our path again and we can see that works. Okay, now our path contains this. Will our system now execute um, the tail command differently? And we execute tail and we see that yes, it calls our tail and not the usual tail. Does it do the same thing for our live log? Well, let's find out. Let's execute live log. And what is that? Is that a root shell? Yes, that is a root shell. We have just pawned this box. We are root right now. And we did that because they forgot to specify the full path for tail. And we could just edit the, the path and made it ex execute a different tail that we have created. And that is how we got root. Conclusion and outro. We started this box off with zero privileges, zero knowledge, just an IP. We then did a port scan and that gave us two web pages. We run FF on those web pages to do some content enumeration. From there, we found a file, a backup file that we could open in SQLite 3. That granted us with a hash. We cracked that hash to get a password that we could then use on the different web page. In that web page, we found an XXE or an XML external entity attack that could lead us to read files from the server, which we used to extract the private SSH key of Barry. We then cracked that SSH key, got the password and logged in as Barry. And furthermore, we even went to root by exploiting an SUID binary in a very, very cool way. And that is it for this week's video. I really like this box. It's a really good one from TryHackMe. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, leave a like down below and subscribe if you want to see more of me and Pascal. We make videos on the Integrity channel. So anyways, I hope you liked it and I hope to see you back next week. Take care.